and in this video we are going to talk about ovarian cancer in pregnancy so when we talk about ovarian cancer we generally we, gen we are generally talking about ovarian masses even ovarian tumors so there are three types of ovarian masses for example first is ovarian benign tumors ovarian cancer and adnexal mass now the tumors ovarian tumor the normal the normal uh, incidence rate is 1 per 1000 delivery i am talking about tumors i am not talking about cancers and the cancers will be 1 upon the 5000 to 18000 deliveries so the rate of cancer is much much lower we all know this thing now when we talk about adnexal mass adnexal mass is a different thing ovarian tumor is a different thing and ovarian cancer is a different thing adnexa means what adnexa means adjacent to the uterus so when you have a uterus here and in the adnexa you have fallopian tube you have broad ligament you have ovary so this is both side adnexa so adnexal mass can be anything okay it, it may be functional cyst which is the most common most common cyst adenoma may be mucinous or serous para ovarian cyst endometrioma leomyoma and um, uh, even malignancy so leomyoma is fibroid we can tell it we can we can tell them the broad ligament fibroid like that so upon this adnexal mass three to six persons are what cancers now there are some tumors which are very specific to pregnancy so if the pregnancy is there this tumor can be seen and with the pregnancy ends this tumor will be disappear so these are what luteoma of pregnancy follicular cyst hyperreactor luteinis granulosa cell proliferance hyalus cell hyperplasia and even decidual changes now 10 to 15 percent of the adnexal mass adnexal mass i am talking about adnexal mass go for accidental events now what we call accidental events is like they, these masses can be ruptured can rupture can have a bleeding or can go torsion so these all accidents can be there with 10 to 15 percent of the adnexal mass this will lead to miscarriage preterm labor and dystocia fine hmm. now 1 in 20 to 50 of the ovarian lesions are malignant so we know this thing ovarian lesions and one uh, uh, upon the six becomes symptomatic rest are asymptomatic so let's discuss one by one if the if the tumor is uh, like likely say unilocular cyst if you find the tumor for example you are going for uh, there is a pregnancy of 10 weeks to 12 weeks you are going for ultrasound scan and if you find that if you find that that the small uh, the cyst is less than 6 cm of unilocular cyst this cyst can spontaneously uh, uh, disappear so you don't need to do anything okay persistent complex mass you find a complex cyst or mass persistence it will require laparotomy and excision simple cyst can be persistent but it can be a conservative under the conservative treatment you don't need to remove that simple cyst dermoid cyst it is it is there which is very readily diagnosed by the ultrasound and and and, and uh, with the confidence it can be found with the ultrasound we can diagnose that it is a dermoid cyst so it can be also a conservative management so conservative management should be preferred if any discrepancy happens with the diagnosis and you don't have any other uh, modality than usg you can go for mri before before ex uh, before trying to take a decision to go for a, a laparotomy in pregnancy for any kind of ovarian mass you should go for mri first okay the the role of tumor markers which is very important in ovarian cancer like c125 afv hcg is not very uh, very much there in pregnancy because they are naturally elevated if surgery is uh, is the management 
then how you can proceed with the surgery what are the general principles of surgery the incision should be midline so that with less manipulation of the uterus you can reach out to both ovaries the ovary which is diseased should be removed or uh, uh, only cystectomy can be done in many cases and also get some biopsies from the another uh, other side of the ovary okay peritoneal washing should be done omental peritoneal biopsy should be taken once you are going for laparotomy do proper staging okay frozen section can be done lymph node sampling should be done progesterone support so the, uh, to the pregnancy should be given because sometimes corpus luteum is there in any any of the is this particular uh, ovary and if you take out the ovary the progesterone support to the pregnancy will be lost so external progesterone support should be given now ovarian cancer ovarian cancer uh, generally the pregnant ladies are young when we consider 30 to 40 percent of the cases of ovarian cancer are epithelial cells and germ cell tumors and fortunately two-third of this malignant tumors are having low malignant potential this germinoma is the most common malignant ovarian tumor the low malignant potential tumor in which you should go for surgery but the chemotherapy is not that much required so that because the chemotherapy is again very very dangerous for the baby so you should not go for chemotherapy rest of all it need if the decision of chemotherapy should be uh, uh, given is taken then there are many many agents like bleomycin, etopicide, cisplatin, vincristine which can be used in second trimester which have which we don't have a very obvious study which uh, in which this particular agents will do harm to the baby in second and third trimester not in first trimester okay in first trimester you cannot use chemotherapy if you want to save the pregnancy so these were the principal uh, principal uh, points for ovarian cancer in pregnancy otherwise uh, and detailed video can be made on this particular topic but i think right now this particular small points you should remember so that you will have a better uh, larger view when you find this kind of patient in your general practice again i am telling you whenever you find this kind of uh, ovarian tumors or risky ovarian tumors which you find that it may be a malignant tumor you should involve oncologists too because they might have particular uh, uh, management protocols than a general gynecologist. So kindly involve the oncologist too. Thank you friends.